Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. It is Friday, so you know what that means. It is not only weigh-in day, but it is WW Workshop Day. It's dark and I'm outside of my workshop. It is 6.26 a.m. My workshop opens at 6.30 and I'll be heading in for another amazing topic and a weigh-in. But before I go in, I want to discuss my week a little bit with you guys. So let's talk about my week, the good, the bad, all the things. So my week actually was really, really good. I am so happy I made it to Jazzercise Monday, Wednesday, and yesterday, but I am sore. I literally worked so hard yesterday at Jazzercise that I am incredibly sore today, and now I'm kind of kicking myself for going on a Thursday and hoping that it doesn't negatively affect my weigh-in because whew, my muscles are sore, but I'm happy that I made it to Jazzercise at least three times. And in fact, today I am going after my client signs for his home. I'm going to be heading to a class at 920 this morning and that'll get me four days this week. So yay, that's awesome. I'm thrilled and excited to have went for four days. My food this week was really, really good. I was a little bit hungrier and I think that that's not only because of the working out, but also because guess what? What always happens to me before weigh-in? You guessed it, my friends. It is that time, that time that I hate every single month. So not only coupled with the working out and being extra hungry due to that, I did go over my points a couple of days, but I had lots of fit points from working out. So, and I'm, I'm talking like three or four points over, um, and maybe a hundred to 120 calories over what I normally would eat on a given day. So not enough to affect the scale, I wouldn't think. And I was legitimately hungry. So when I'm legitimately hungry, then I'm going to feed my body. And what I chose was not a bad choice. So I'm happy with that. So I am nervous a little bit about the fact that it is my favorite time of the month. I'm also nervous a little bit about the fact that I am so incredibly sore, but I'm still hoping with all the hard work that I put in this week to still see a loss on the scale. So I'm going to head into my workshop weigh in and I'll be back to share both what we talked about and this week's weigh in. Hi friends, welcome back. I am out of my workshop. What a great workshop once again. WW hits the nail on the head every single week. What we talked about this week is learning about smart points. Smart points 101. We talked about WW not being a diet, but a lifestyle, something that is sustainable. And in order to be successful on my WW, learning the smart points, values of things, and how smart points works is essential. So we talked a little bit about what are smart points? What do they consist of? And as we know, they are calories, saturated fat, sugar, and protein. And my leader talked a lot about why those four pieces comprise a smart point, which I thought was super interesting. So calories in versus calories out is how you lose weight. You have to have a deficit in order to lose weight. No matter what else you do, you, you will not lose weight unless you have a calorie deficit. So that's why calories are a component of a smart points value. And then as far as saturated fat and sugar go, those are a component because those two things lead to diabetes and heart issues. So they wanted to make sure that they were comprising a smart point as well. And lastly, protein keeps you satisfied and full. So that's why you'll see that saturated fat and sugar increase the smart points value where protein lowers it. So I thought that was just a really good reminder, or if you're new to WW, a reason why smart points are what smart points are and why everything has a smart points value. And then we talked a little bit about calories versus smart points and how having a smart point is so much easier than having to track calories. You just enter a smart point, one number versus trying to figure out the calories of things. So it's a little bit more sustainable than calorie or macro counting. So super interesting. There are also three tips that WW gives you to kind of learn smart points. So number one is pre-tracking. And it's funny that this was part of the topic because I have been doing a lot of pre-tracking lately. I will put my food together for the day, especially if I'm going to be out and about, or even when I worked a regular job in an office, I always pre-tracked because then I know exactly where I am come the end of the day for dinner, 
dessert, snacks, that type of thing. So pre-tracking is definitely a really good thing, especially if you are planning an indulgence. So let's say that on Saturday, you're attending a friend's birthday party and you are gonna have a piece of cake because I would be having a piece of cake. So you want to know that that's going to cost you 18 smart points, let's say. So you want to pre-track that for Friday or Saturday or whenever your birthday party is so that that day you can fill the gaps with zero point foods and you also know at the beginning of the week or midweek how many weeklies you have left. So pre-tracking is great. It's great when you have an adult indulgence coming up, but it's also great just to do on a daily basis. Like I said, I will pre-track my breakfast, lunch, and snacks to know what I have left for dinner and dessert. And that way, if I get hungry later in the day, which happens a lot when I go to Jazzercise, I'm really hungry in the afternoon, I know exactly how many points are left after my breakfast, my lunch, and the snacks that I've tracked that I can maybe have that additional snack if that's what I need to satiate me. So pre-tracking is great. I think it helps you stay on track even more and it kind of takes out the excuse of, well, I forgot to track because you've already pre-tracked your foods. And I did mention in a couple of weeks ago in a weigh-in video that I'm really good about tracking up until afternoon or dinner. So by pre-tracking, it really helps me have that piece out of the equation and I can just carry on with my day because my food is already pre-tracked. So pre-tracking is a definite good thing to think about if you struggle with tracking or if you struggle with working those indulgences and those favorite foods into your daily eating. Number two is be mindful of your portion size. This is huge because a lot of us, me included, are where we are weight wise because we have terrible portion control. So I think weighing and measuring everything is so incredibly important on WW. I talk about this in my 20 tips to lose weight. I will link that video down below for you guys. I talk a lot about weighing and measuring because that's how you keep your portion sizes in check. There's also little tips and tricks that WW has as far as like using your hand, like your fist for a portion of protein, your thumb for a tablespoon, your pinky for a teaspoon, things that you can do to keep your portions in check. And another thing on the topic of portions is if you go into your WW app, you can adjust the portion size of things, which then adjusts the smart point. So for example, let's say that for lunch, you want to have a serving of pretzels, but you don't want to spend spend three points on pretzels, you want to spend two points on pretzels. Go ahead and scan or track your pretzels and then adjust the number of pieces or the serving size and it will adjust the smart points. And you can see exactly how many of those pretzels you can have to stay within two smart points. So the app is absolutely amazing. You can adjust portion sizes and adjust, adjust number of pieces, ounces, grams, all through the app to adjust the portion size to fit into your day. But make sure whatever portion size you choose is going to satisfy you so you don't end up making poor decisions down the road. Eat a little bit more, take the points if you need it to feel satisfied. And number three is make savvy swaps. You guys, this, I am the queen of savvy swaps. I do this all the time. So let's say that you are craving spaghetti and you are not going to be happy until you have some spaghetti. Instead of a high point noodle that's going to cost you five or six smart points for two ounces, swap that for a better option. For example, fiber gourmet pasta. You guys know I'm obsessed with fiber gourmet. You can have two ounces for three smart points. So right there is a savvy swap. You take out the five or six smart point noodle and you put in a three smart point noodle and you just saved yourself some points and the pasta is delicious. You can purchase that on net Trishan's website. The link for that is down below in the description box. So that's an example of a savvy swap. You could also do zoodles, but if you're really wanting pasta and not going as far as swapping out for vegetable pasta, fiber gourmet is a great option. So make those savvy swaps. Instead of regular butter, use light butter. Instead of regular sugar, use a sugar alternative. Make those swaps so that you can better include your favorite foods and those dishes that you're absolutely dying to have into your day. So I absolutely love the topic right up my alley as far as getting to know your smart points. And I think it's great for those of you that are new to WW or some of us old timers who just need a refresher on the things that matter. Portion size, swapping our favorite foods, and really paying attention to the smart points value. So 
Way to go, WW, on this week's topic. So let's move right into my weigh-in. All right, let's talk weigh-in. So as I mentioned before I went into my workshop, I had a great week. I kicked booty with my exercise, had a good week with food. The only bad parts of this week were that I was sore from my workout yesterday. So I've been thinking about that and I'll get into that a little bit later as well as the wonderful time of the month. So when I got on the scale today, I lost 0.4 pounds. Was I happy with that? Absolutely, positively not. Do I feel that that shows a true sense of my work I put in this week? No, but this is a prime example, you guys, of what I was talking about in my 20 tips to lose weight video is that sometimes our bodies have a mind of their own and we can do everything right and not see that show up on the scale. And this is a prime example of that for me for this week. So I was a bit disappointed and then I snapped myself back into reality and knew that, you know what? I did everything that I could have done to be successful this week on the scale and having a 0.4 loss is still a success. So I am hoping that I see it kick in next week and maybe have a little bit bigger loss on the scale, but it motivates me to have a great week this week. So I'm excited. I'm happy that I had a loss. My January or my 2020 is off to a great start. So yay for that. And as far as working out goes, so like I mentioned, I worked out yesterday, which made me really sore today. And I was thinking about that. Maybe working out the day before weigh-in isn't the brightest decision because your body does retain a lot of water when your muscles are sore. And I am sore every time I do jazzercise. It is such an intense workout that I think I'm gonna switch things up a little bit. And I think I'm gonna do a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday workout and skip Thursdays just to help with that number on the scale a little bit, help with the soreness and the water retention. Now there may be days that I do or weeks that I have to work out on Thursday because of my schedule, but my goal is to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and at very least get in three days. So again, I never know with my schedule if that's going to work week to week, but my goal is three or more times a week going to jazzercise. So I think skipping out my workout on Thursday, or maybe if anything, when the weather gets a little bit nicer, going for a walk instead of going to jazzercise so that I'm a little less sore when I weigh in on Friday. But you know what, you guys, in my mind and in my heart, I know I did everything right this last week. So is that a true reflection of the work I put in? No, but I still have a loss and I'm really proud of myself for what I've done so far in the month of January. I have lost every week since the new year and that is huge for me. So I am super thankful for that. So this next week, Part for the course, I'm gonna do exactly what I did last week. I'm going to track honestly, I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna drink a lot of water. I drank a lot of water this last week as well. And I'm gonna do everything right, and I know that my work will show on the scale next week. So that was my weigh-in for this week. I wanna hear how was your guys' week? How are you doing as far as your goals for the new year? Did you gain, did you lose? Was it what you expected? How was your week? I definitely wanna hear that. And I also wanna hear what are your thoughts on learning your smart points? Is it something that you needed a refresher on as a seasoned Weight Watcher? Or are you new to Weight Watchers and it's nice to hear exactly what comprises a smart point and some tricks and tips that you can do to make your smart points maybe stretch a little bit further. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new, welcome, welcome. I'm excited to have you here on my channel. I'd love it if you would take a moment and subscribe. And of course, hit that little bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. I do upload pretty much daily, so you don't wanna miss a single video. I'd love it if you give this video a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And of course, leave those comments down below. I wanna hear about your week, your goals, what you think about kind of relearning or learning the smart points way. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye. Ooh.